today we are going to be doing a rookie mock draft with landing spots. We have Cody Carpentier's mock draft 3.0 out on playerprofiler.com. I have put all the landing spots into this spreadsheet. We're going to go over these landing spots briefly here. Cody really didn't do us many favors, especially with Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, there, I suppose there's some things in here that I like. But Marvin Harrison Jr.'s landing spot with the New York Giants is pukey. Malik Neighbors to the Cardinals. Roma Dunze to the Jets could be interesting. Brock Bowers to the Bengals. Xavier Worthy to the, to the Dolphins. Brian Thomas Jr., Lions. And you can kind of see some of these. Adonai Mitchell, Troy Franklin, Troy Franklin, Panthers, Mitchell, Saints. Ricky Pearsall ends up with the Jaguars. The first running back off the board, Jalen Wright to the Cowboys. And then Spencer Rattler, again, is probably going to go higher in this mock. Lad McConkey Bills. Bo Nix ends up with the Broncos. So you can kind of see all of these landing spots. And then we're going to be, you know, a few players short here at the end, but we'll make the best pick possible. Malachi Corley ends up with the Chiefs. That's a sexy one. Jonathan Brooks with the Chargers. That is a sexy landing spot. We know the Chargers are going to take a running back in this year's draft. Just look at their running back depth chart. Look at their cap situation. They're not going to sign a free agent. Jonathan Brooks would be a home run pick for them in the third round. So Blake Corm to the Rams. So we've gone over these landing spots. Let's get into a sleeper draft where I'm going to make all the picks here. So let me change up the screen. Very briefly, again, if you're joining us, don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you like this content. So away we go. Again, I I don't think in a super flex league, I don't think it's a com. I don't think it's a really anymore. Caleb Williams with all those weapons, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore. Who knows? In this particular mock draft, they don't draft a wide receiver until the third round. They draft Brendan Rice with pick 85 so there's enough weaponry there however in chicago to make caleb williams life a lot easier and they they still have cap space to build around him as well so caleb williams to me is a no-brainer in a super flex league and then it gets interesting because again i didn't really like the marvin harrison jr landing spot with new york the Arizona landing spot with Malik Neighbors, I feel, is much better. There's going to be more opportunity there. There's going to be a ton of opportunity with Marvin Harrison Jr. as well. But I think I'm still going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. as the as the next pick here. I I just believe he is a transcendent talent at the wide receiver position. Landing spot, it, it's going to matter for him as it matters for everybody. But he's he's just so good and he's going to he's going to soak up so many of those targets in New York even if the giants decide to go with Daniel Jones i don't think that's the end of the world i think Daniel Jones could have a resurgence this year by Daniel Jones standards i think he could be okay and with Marvin Harrison Jr there i think that that could be a really good thing now is the time i think where i would go quarterback and in this particular mock draft the, the Washington Commanders go Jaden Daniels. And there's no doubt that for fantasy purposes, Jaden Daniels is going to score a lot of fantasy points right away. He's going to have Terry McLaurin. He's going to have Jahan Dotson. He's going to have some support there. He's going to be the number two pick in the draft. He's going to be insulated in this situation. I have my concerns about him as a prospect. I do. But he's the number two overall pick in this situation. And he has a ton of fantasy upside. You cannot deny it. I have my concerns about his overall ability as a player. I think he relies on his athleticism too much. But I cannot deny if he gets taken in the top two or top three in a super flex format, he absolutely belongs in the top three picks. Now let's go off the board. Well, not really off the board. Drake May gets selected by the Minnesota Vikings in this scenario. Yeah, so we're gonna pick Drake May, the 104. And I apologize, I just realized that the noises were not off. But Drake May ending up with the Minnesota Vikings is about 
a dream situation for anybody that would wind up there. J.J. McCarthy has been rumored there, but in this mock draft, Drake May ends up with the Vikings. I believe he's going to start right away if that's who they select. I think Drake May is about as NFL ready as any of these quarterbacks. He's my quarterback, two in the class. And with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, I know is hurt, but he'll be back. That is about as good as it gets for a quarterback prospect to enter the NFL with all those weapons. And you just watch the tape of Drake May. I think my comp for him has always been Daniel Jones. I don't think that's an insult. I don't think he's Josh Allen, but I don't think he's terrible either. And he is set up just like Caleb Williams is set up in Minnesota in this situation to absolutely thrive. And in Superflex, that's the direction we have to go. Now, I am going to take what I feel is a layup pick now as Malik Neighbors ended up with the Arizona Cardinals in this in Cody's mock draft. So he's going to be our fifth pick off the board here in the Superflex format. And again, he's automatically, now that Hollywood Brown's not there, not that that would have made much of a difference, but Malik Neighbors is going to be Kyler Murray's number one target in Arizona. You could argue that he you could push him up ahead of some of these quarterbacks. I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with it. I just think quarterback in a super flex league, it's hard to pass, especially with the landing spots that some of these quarterbacks are getting. Now you're noticing that J.J. McCarthy, McCarthy, even though he was taken number three overall, he's falling down my board a little bit. But now I think is the time to take J.J. McCarthy here with the sixth pick. E- even though he gets drafted by New England, he's still a top three pick in the NFL, right? I guess he could be Zach Wilson. I think he's better than Zach Wilson, That even though that's my comp for him. That's Matt Babich's. We've kind of made that comparison on the Dynasty Roundtable. But New England, this is a new age for New England. This is a new coaching staff, defensive-minded coach, Gerard Mayo. If they take J.J. McCarthy, I think they're going to have a plan for him. And you just... It's it's such it's a quarterback that's insulated, even though he's not in the greatest of situations uh, for me. Next off the board is going to be Rome Adunze. And he winds up with the Jets. I think that's a fine landing spot paired up with Garrett Wilson. All of a sudden, now you think about that receiving core, Mike Williams, Rome Adunze, Garrett Wilson. I don't know if there's going to be a ton of volume for him right off the jump. I think the quarterback situation is a little uncertain. With Aaron Rodgers, who knows what's going to happen there in the future this past this season. But for this season, it could be good. He could get – I don't know if he's going to get out-target – Garrett. he's definitely not going to out-target Garrett Wilson. I don't know if he's going to out-target Mike Williams, although Mike Williams has had injury problems in the past. But I think that's a good landing spot. I think it's good enough to warrant – You know, I think you could argue take, you, you could take him ahead of J.J. McCarthy if you wanted to in this – situation next up we're staring down the barrel of a couple prospects that winded up with great landing spots but in this tight end premium format it's tough but i think we're gonna go brock bowers i'm gonna have to scroll down a little bit but brock bowers in this situation ends up with oh i i messed this up hold on i didn't pick tight end as, a, as an option here so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to change the settings and if, if you if you've ever um i'm gonna have to make this a flex here all right update all right apologies for that so now brock bowers is an option for us and we're gonna go ahead and take him with this pick he winds up with the Bengals, as i said and who knows what's gonna happen with the Bengals? who knows if they're gonna trade t higgins away who knows Tyler Boyd's a free agent. There could be a ton of volume right off the bat with Joe Burrow in Cincinnati in a tight end premium format. I think it's a gift. You're getting him at the one eight. That's how deep this draft class is at the one nine. So we have Xavier worthy being picked by the Miami dolphins. I think that has to be the pick given the draft capital, given the speed, given the system and it's just it's just the perfect Tyreek Hill replacement. You know, if Tyreek Hill ends up retiring after this year, Xavier Worthy slots right into that same role. Now, is he as good as Tyreek Hill? 
No, he's not. But he's fast. We know Mike McDaniel likes fast players. Tua Tungavailoa is a great distributor distributor of the football, regardless of what you think about him as a player in the NFL. This is the distinction we have to make. Just like Kirk Cousins is great for fantasy, Tua is great for fantasy. And it's a great situation for Xavier Worthy. And we know now that undersized, undersized players, wide receivers, running backs, are – becoming more successful it's not that you have to be the 200 pound wide receiver that lines up in the x right some people still that might still be their flavor but you don't have to be that to be successful jordan addison proved that last year zay flower same deal now we're getting to the section of the draft that's interesting um brian but i think brian thomas jr being selected by the detroit Lions uh, is the is the pick. He, he's the next wide receiver, the last wide receiver drafted. Only five wide receivers drafted in this first round. I, I, Cody is very conservative there. But Brian Thomas Jr. ending up with the Detroit Lions is a great situation. Again, Bri, uh, Jared Goff is good for fantasy. Jared Goff is not going to run with the football. If I can figure out how to make sleeper work. Jared Goff is going to be a pocket passer. He's going to distribute. Amon Ross St. Brown is there to take the heat off of Brian Thomas. You could say Brian Thomas Jr. with Detroit. I mean, can you imagine as a field stretcher? I think he's still got to develop as a route runner. He's still got to develop his route tree. But in that system, maybe he's what Jam they wish Jamison Williams could be. And can you imagine? They, they, they're still going to use Jamison Williams. Can you imagine – in those three wide receiver sets, Jamison Williams, Brian Thomas Jr., and then Amon Ross St. Brown on the field all together. That's going to open up a lot of territory for uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. It's going to be good for Amon Ross St. Brown with Jared Goff at quarterback. All right. Now, Michael Penix Jr., it's interesting, was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams at the end of the first round. That would tell me that they are – at least somewhat worried about Matthew Stafford's future with the team. But that I don't think that's going to be my pick right now because that's not going that's not somebody who's going to be a starter at least right away. He's going to get drafted soon. Troy Franklin ended up with the Panthers, Adonai Mitchell ended up with the Saints. I think we're going to go Adonai Mitchell with this next pick. Because you look at the depth chart in New Orleans is at receiver. It's Chris Olave. It's Rashid Shahid. And they don't really have a ton of cap space to really add to that. And I think Derek Carr is a good enough quarterback to get the ball to his receivers. Now, deep down the field, he's not the greatest as far as accuracy goes. But again, this is a wide receiver that I really like in Adonai Mitchell. It's not the greatest of all landing spots. It's not the worst either with the Saints. So picking him at the end of the first round here feels like a gift, even with the situation. Now, the last pick in the first round, again, we have a quarterback sitting there that was drafted in the first round at pick 30 overall in the NFL draft. We have a couple wide receivers that were drafted, Ricky Pearsall, Troy Franklin. But I think we go with the running back who just gets the ultimate landing spot you can make an argument that he should be taken higher but Jalen Wright's being selected by the Dallas Cowboys is one of these landing spots that we are going to be monitoring you know that's one of the landing spots that we're excited about in fantasy football the Dallas Cowboys if they select a running back on day two that running back is going to shoot up dynasty rankings and like I said you you could argue that Jalen Wright should be drafted higher than this with that Cowboys landing spot. So we're at the two one now. And again, I have kind of laid it out, but I think we are going to bypass Troy Franklin. We're going to bypass Ricky Pearsall. And we're going to go with lad McConkey winding up with the Buffalo bills. I don't know if I need to really say this, but lad McConkey is a really good football player. And I think he slots in. I mean, as one of their top pass catchers with Dalton Kincaid right off the jump, if this is where he winds up. I know he goes a little bit later in the second round, but it's not crazy to think that he's one of their top, like I said, well, it's not crazy to think he's not one of their top pass catchers right away. 
And first pick of the second round, totally okay with it. I think now is the time. We saw my, Michael Penix on the board. We still have Troy Franklin. I think we go with the quarterback. I think we take Michael Penix here with the second pick in the second round. And we let Troy Franklin fall a little bit more. Penix being drafted in the first round is a big deal for a quarterback. It tells me that the Rams have serious plans to have him learn, have him sit with Sean McVay. It's a really good situation for him. And who knows, as as early as next year, he could be the guy, especially being drafted in the first round in Los Angeles. With the third pick in the second round, we're gonna we are gonna start going shock here. Troy Franklin winds up with the Carolina Panthers in Cody's mock draft with pick 39 in the second round. Again, it's not the greatest of situations. We're not sure how Bryce Young is gonna develop. I'm a little bit higher on Bryce Young as a prospect. I think adding a Troy Franklin, adding in a Deontay Johnson, signing those two guards, paying hundred million dollars to Robert Hunt shows me that they are committed to him as their starting franchise quarterback. I think Bryce Young still has a couple years left given he was taken number one overall and Troy Franklin can only help and becomes a part of that mix and in a system on a team that I don't think is very good. I think there's going to be a ton of targets to go around and I still think Troy Franklin's a pretty good talent. So we now, it now it gets a little interesting because we have Ricky Pearsall, who was drafted in the second round. Spencer Rattler was taken by the Las Vegas Raiders in the second round. Keon Coleman was taken by the Baltimore Ravens. Roman Wilson by the Baltimore, by the San Francisco 49ers at the end of the second round. And those are, are the second round picks. So it, this, this throws a curveball. The Spencer Rattler curveball is interesting. And it depends on how you feel about Spencer Rattler, right? But I think Spencer Rattler, if he goes to the Las Vegas Raiders, I think I think that's got to be the pick here. And let me know what you think in the comments. But this is about as good of a situation as you could hope for because you have two bridge quarterbacks in – oh, shoot, I'm, I'm spacing on them. But you guys know who they are. Gardner Minshew – is one of them. The kid from Purdue is the other one. Aiden O'Connell, I couldn't think of his name. But Spencer Rattler being drafted in the second round, again, it's very similar to the Michael Penix situation. It's not as good of a situation. You have a defensive-minded head coach there. But it's a team that's looking to make change. And you could say that Spencer Rattler winds up in the ultimate situation. I don't know how long Devontae Adams plans on being with Las Vegas, but that's a pretty good wide receiver, a pretty good group of quarterbacks there with some experience in Minshew to learn from. And I think if he gets drafted that high, this is where he's going to go. And this is where he should go in rookie drafts. And so now I think you, you, you I, now I think is an interesting because we have some wide receivers, but we have another ultimate landing spot. And I know it was the third round, but Jonathan Brooks, winding up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Again, the Los Angeles Chargers are one of these teams we, that we know is going to draft a running back. I would I would almost put money on it. I, in fact, I would put money. If I could, I, I, don't, I don't know if there, there's a bet out there that you can make. But Jonathan Brooks going in the third round again, I get it. But really, there's only the, – the Chargers running back room was Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly – and another guy that I can't think of right now. But the depth chart is wide open for a running back like Jonathan Brooks to just come in and take over. And Gus Edwards is a nice running back, but he's a complimentary piece. He's kind of been that served in that role his entire career. And Jonathan Brooks going to the Chargers is one of those landing spots, like I said, that we're looking for. So he's my pick here. And now we have another running back who went to the Giants and Trey Benson. I don't love that as much. I think the Giants have a ton of work to do or a ton of work to do on their offensive line. I think we're going to go back to wide receiver with this next pick, and we're going to go Ricky Pearsall, who was selected by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this he this is a wide receiver if he lands here, in the depending on what the rest of the offseason shakes out. I mean, this is Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, 
Ricky Pearsall would would slot in as a as a key part of this offense right away with Trevor Lawrence. So I do like that landing spot. You could uh, you could, again just the way this shook out. I think Pearsall belongs here. I don't think I would take him. Uh, obviously, I just took him here. But like Jonathan Brooks with the Chargers, I wouldn't take him ahead of there. We're gonna go. This this video is going a little bit longer than I thought, so we'll we'll go rapid fire here. So I think now is the time to take a, a player that I'm that I'm not really certain of. I don't I don't know how I feel about him. Well, not yet. We'll take that player later. We'll go with Roman Wilson as a potential, depending on what the 49ers do with Brandon Ayuk and that weirdness. In, in this mock draft, Roman Wilson was selected by the San Francisco 49ers at the end of the second round with pick 63. And I love Roman Wilson. I think he's a great prospect. I think he he was super productive in that run-heavy scheme at Michigan, and I loved his tape. Uh, and now, now we are going to go with the player that I don't really know what to do with in Keon Coleman, who ends up with the Baltimore Ravens at the end of the second round. Again, Baltimore last season was worse in the NFL in pass attempts. You have Zay Flowers there already. Mark Andrews is going to come back from injury. They're going to look to run the ball a ton. This is a physical beast of a wide receiver. Broke out really early. I think he could be good. I just don't know. I think he's he's a, a tremendously raw prospect. I think him winding up with Baltimore here is really really good situation for him. As I, I contemplated taking him over uh, Roman Wilson there, and so now I think so. Now we shift to, back to quarterback, and Bo Nix was taken by the Denver Broncos. So you would imagine that Bo Nix is either going to sit behind Jared Stidham and learn, or he's going to be the starter right away. I would assume that he's the starter right away. If they take him in the, I mean, he's a third round pick in this mock draft. So that's not like, you know, they spent a first round pick on him or anything like some mock drafts are suggesting now. And I think that would be insane. But in the third round, Bo Nix developmental prospect, I think, he struggles throwing the ball deep down the field, but with Sean Payton, who knows? And I think that's a this is a perfect spot to select him. Now we get a little bit further down the road here. And this might seem crazy to some people, but uh, let me know what you think. I, I think Malachi Corley, even though he's selected in the third round, at the end of the third round, and I'm, I'm going to have to scroll. I might even have to look up his name here. But Malachi Corley ending up with a Kansas City Chiefs. You could argue that Malachi Corley should be taken higher than this. And, and in fact, if he wound up with the Chiefs, he probably should be taken higher than he is right here. Even if he's drafted in the third round, it's the ultimate steal. We don't know what's going to happen with Rashi Rice. There are rumors out there that he could be facing jail time. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not a legal expert. I'm not going to pretend to be one. But if that's true, there should be a ton of targets for somebody like Malachi Corley. There probably should be anyway. And this is the ultimate Debo Samuel-like prospect that Patrick Mahomes can get the ball to on wide receiver screens, on slants over the middle. I think he can run deep. I do. I And just his yards after the catch ability – is just insane. I, I think he could be San Francisco's Debo Samuel replacement if they want to draft him in the third round. I think he's going to be there. So I, anyway, him him with Kansas City would just be off the chain. Unbelievable. I think we're going to go with this next pick to running back. Trey Benson ends up with the Giants. I don't love the landing spot, but I do love the player. And he's going to get opportunities there right away. We know Saquon's no longer there. So Trey Benson is my pick with the 11th pick in the second round. And you can kind of see, this is why I've been telling people to load up on some of these late seconds, third rounders, even fourth round rookie picks, because there's going to be a ton of value. I mean, Trey Benson going at the 11th pick here, Malachi Corley at the 10th pick, tremendous value. Let's shift gears here uh we have a i think we go back to receiver here um and there's a, there's a ton of good options 
But I think Xavier Leggett winding up with the Colts is going to be our pick. Uh, Xavier Leggett, very fast. <laughs> Not as big as we thought, but very fast. And it would seemingly be a perfect complement to Michael Pittman, who's not necessarily a speed receiver. Um, so now we're going to st- kick off the third round. Ben Sinat gets drafted by the Falcons. Don't love that landing spot with Kyle Pitts there. There's only so many targets to go around, and I don't know if he's going to be featured right away. Jatavian Sanders, though, does wind up with the Washington Commanders. Not really a tight end there that's going to challenge him, I think, for the starting job. So I think he's going to get a role right away. So Jatavian Sanders, even though I'm not necessarily his biggest fan, is going to be my pick in the third round in a tight end premium format. Again, he winds up with the Washington Commanders in the third round of the NFL draft at pick 78. And so let's go right back to receiver. And let's go with Javon Baker here at the 3-2. Javon Baker in this mock winds up with the Steelers. And again, I think this that would that makes a lot of sense for them. They need somebody to pair up with George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth. And all of a sudden, that offense with Russell Wilson looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, again, we we have another wide receiver. And I think Devontae Walker winding up with the Cowboys is the best landing spot here. So I think I'm going to go Devontae Walker. And then real quickly, uh, Brendan Rice winds up with the Bears uh, in the third round. So Brendan Rice is going to be my next pick as a good option to, you know, Brendan Rice. It makes a ton of sense. I, I, I would almost call this right now that Brendan Rice is going to be a Chicago Bear because of the connection to Caleb Williams. But I think that's a great fit for him. And that puts us at the fifth pick in the third round here. And, you know, we have Ben Sinat to the Falcons in the third round. We have Will Shipley, who did end up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's, I feel like, a pretty good fit, pretty good compliment. But I don't know if he's going to compete to start right away with Rashad White there. Jalen Polk winds up with the Falcons. Theo Johnson winds up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Blake Corum with the Rams. I think Blake Corum is the pick here because I don't know. Like we, I talked about this with, I talked about it with Aaron Stewart on the Dynasty Roundtable. I talked to him about how the Rams have never had a back to back season under Sean McVay with a leading rusher. And I think if they draft Blake Corum, that means, you know, that I, I think, I don't think that spells the end for Kyron Williams, but I think that means that Kyron Williams. His, his usage is going to go down. I think they want to keep Kyron Williams healthy and Blake Corum coming in with the offense, with Matthew Stafford, with Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. I think Blake Corum could have a role right away, and I think he would. Be, I would have him ranked higher. I think it's just a better situation. He's take he's taken here ten picks after Will Shipley. Um, so again, let's let's go. Let's just do it. Um, let's take Theo Johnson here. Theo Johnson in this mock ends up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Theo Johnson is an extremely, extremely raw prospect. And I'm, I'm having to scroll and I'm having to scroll. Maybe I missed him. Let's just make sure I'm not crazy here. He's extremely raw, but he's extremely athletic and, and Kate Otten is there. I get it. But again, he, I think he has a better situation or a better path to opportunities than a Ben uh, Sanat. So the players that we have left here taken in day two are Will Shipley, Jalen Polk. Uh, and that's, is that it? And Ben Sanat in Ben Sanat. So we could go, you know, with a wild card pick. Um, honestly, I don't love any of those landing spots for any of those players. Just because I think Jalen Polk with Atlanta is going to get buried. Ben Sinat behind Kyle Pitts. I don't know how much opportunity for him there's going to be right away. Um, Will Shipley, uh, same story. But again, day two pick. So I think I'm going to go with Will Shipley. I think I will go with Will Shipley here. Again, I, I had, had a great pro day. Just a great, great pro day at Clemson. Displayed his athleticism. He's a pass-catching running back. Um. I think I will go Marshawn Lloyd even without a, a landing spot. 
I think Marshawn Lloyd's super talented. I think he's probably going to be uh, in this scenario one of the first picks in day three. Um, I will go Ben Sanat here um, just because he is that – at this point, the value is just too good, even though he's with Atlanta. Let's go – Let's just do it. I, you know, there's a chance. I'm I'm really big on Darnell Mooney, but I think Jalen Polk has some of the best hands in the class. And him winding up with Kirk Cousins, I mean, if there's an injury there, he could get an opportunity uh, right away. And that's really it for mock drafts or who the offensive players that were selected. So let's let's see what we got left over here. The, the last two picks of this draft. I think we are going to go. I'm going to go with my guy. Um, Jermaine Burton here. I think Burton is underrated as a player and wide receiver in day three. I get it. It's not great. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you one guy I like and one guy I'm not really certain of, but Braylon Allen falling this far. There's no reason for it. Um, so if he's there at the back end of the third round, I think he's probably going to get some good draft capital and that might change my opinion on him. But I think Braylon Allen's a relatively limited player. But at the in the third round, of your rookie draft. That's way too late for Braylon, Braylon Allen. And I, I thank you so much for watching this video and bearing with me through this cold that I have and the sinus. I think it's a sinus infection. So I, I appreciate you. Uh, go check out Cody Carpentier's mock draft 3.0. The link will be in the comments or in the description of this video. And again, my name is Seth Dewell. You can follow me on Twitter at Seth underscore D I E W L D W O L D D I E W O L D. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And until next time, be good, everybody, and take care.